Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Tarantala Nenet is also with us, of course, today. And together, we're going to take a look at price action strategies, part one. Part two will be next week, same time, same place, on the 9th of June. Before we take a look at today's topic, though, be aware of this disclaimer. This webinar is shown to a global audience, uh, but may not be suitable for everyone. Take a look at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact the appropriate entity for more details and information. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange, or trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. May also not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, plus you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, thanks so much for joining. Good to see you, Pep. Good to see everyone. I hope that you can hear and, and see me. Uh, a couple of confirmations would be great just, just to check. So we're excited about this, Dennett, and uh, I are very big fans of price action. We like to look at momentum correction. We like to look at candles and candlestick patterns. Uh, we do combine them with a couple of indicators. Typically, on average, we uh, take a look at a MACD or an awesome oscillator or a moving average or a trend line or a FIB. Uh, you know, so from that point of view, we're not only looking at price action, but it is certainly a very important part of our trading. And there are definitely traders out there that only use it. Now, for me, I like to add extra information, uh, you know, just to give me a bit more kind of context of the chart. So that's why I like to mix the two. But, you know, there's definitely a lot of, a lot, a ton of information that we can see just looking at candles. And that is our focus of today. So what I, what's going to basically going to happen in this webinar is I'm going to dive into the details, how to read price, how to interpret price action, the candles, what does, what does the candles really mean? What can we do with that? So that's the first part. Then the second part, Nen is going to take over and he's going to share a specific strategy with you uh, regarding price action. So that's the lineup of today. So reading the flow of price. In my opinion, the three basic core elements when looking at a candle are, is there a wick? Is the close near the high or low? And what is the size of the candle? Now, these three things you might already know, but they're important because a big wick, for instance, here on the left, you can see a big wick, or here as well, that indicates weakness. The close near the high or low indicates strength because if price, for instance, closes here very close near the low, or let's see uh, here near the near the high right that indicates basically that price is is or i should say that particular candle is in control by the bulls or bears right if the close is near the high the bulls are in control if the close is near the low the bears are in control and thirdly the candle size is important because if we have a candle that's very smallish like this for instance uh, or, or perhaps this one here, that really doesn't give as much information to us uh, as bigger size candles. The bigger, the more basically, uh, the more price action occurred in that candle, and that basically has more meaning. Uh, a small candle like that means that there was really not much fight within that, I think, oh, this is a weekly chart, so there was not much movement in that week. So that we just can conclude less from it. So as you can see, in this example, the blue box here is something we discussed live a couple of weeks ago in this particular webinar. I think it was uh, four weeks ago. And we were analyzing the euro dollar. And we were, I was saying, this is a pin bar. And this, this has to see some bearish follow through because of, the, because of the bearish reversal candlestick pattern that you can read into this. We have, if we zoom in, a close near the low. We have a big wick. And it's a pretty sizable candle. All right, so that's a good reversal candle. And indeed, the last couple of weeks, we had three downside continuation candles after that. So that's a classical example of reversal and a good follow through of that reversal uh, as we discussed live a couple of weeks ago. So that's just a basic introduction. 
I'm going to give you a lot of examples, so but hang in, with, hang in here with me as we take a look at just a bit of, let's say, theory. Uh, basically, price action, in my view, it is a sort of language, you know, as we speak English now, or maybe you have a other a language that's your mother tongue. Uh, price action, in a way, is a sort of communication, is a, is a way to communicate. Uh, it's kind of like a language. So as we do this more often, we'll get better at it. It is a way to basically analyze a sentiment that's one. We can understand the flow of movement. So for instance, uh, we can see if there's bearish momentum or if there's bullish momentum or if there's some kind of correction going on where price is going sideways. So the flow of price. We can also interpret patterns. We can interpret candlestick patterns, first of all, but also chart patterns. And we also can use candles to see how price reacts to support or resistance. So for instance, if, if there's a support level here, let's just for, for convenience sake, say that there's a support level and we see a green, uh, we see that green box there, that's a pin bar. So we see a reaction of price to the support level. That's giving us information that price is reacting to support. All right. So that's another way of how we can use price action. So we can analyze the flow, we can interpret patterns, and we understand how price reacts, if and how price reacts to support and resistance. Very fundamental, important things. All right, so now we know what we can do with it. We can also, just a bit of background here, a candle basically is the smallest unit we can look at. But if we combine a couple of candles, we can look at candlestick patterns. Right. So, for instance, this all of this is one candle. But if we combine these two candles, we see bearish engulfing twins. All right. So that's combining two candles to read a, a pattern. But we can also combine more. We can combine several candles like this to, to see and understand a swing high, swing low. And we can even combine groups of swing high, swing lows to understand pattern uh, trends. We're not going to talk that much about the latter two, but we're going to talk more about the first two. All right, so let's dive into some practice. This week, you're a dollar, all right? Very interesting uh, things to discuss, I think, because your dollar actually made a strong upside uh, earlier this week, right? And now that might not have been very logical to some of you, but for me, it was something that I was expecting. If you look at my wave analysis, for instance, that is something I expected. And if you looked at my M Monday weekly Forex recap, also I expected that. Now why? Let's give a bit of context. There was four hour divergence and there was a daily support trend line in this neighborhood, in this zone. Those are two things that do give a bit of context, first of all. But if we look at the price action, all right, on the hourly chart, on Monday's video, I said, if we see a strong bullish momentum, then that would be a confirmation that price will probably make a bigger correction to the upside. Now look at that green arrow here in the middle of the chart. All right, because when I was taping that video, price was here, as far as I remember. I hope that's, or, or maybe it was here, but it wasn't, it wasn't too far. All right, so what happened? We got the momentum to the upside. All right, so the bullish price action, the bullish candles, all right, that occurred in that piece confirmed the potential there of price to go against the trend and make a bigger correction or reversal or at least some upside there, as you see. So price action made that confirmation. So if you look at the candles that occurred in this piece to the upside, let's take a look at the trades that I took this week onto your dollar and let's take a look at the candles themselves to understand why I did that. And we'll take, you know, just a look here a few minutes and then we'll dive into some uh, other examples where I ask you, all right? So first of all, I didn't trade this first upside. I don't like to trade the first kind of reversal part uh, in most cases, but uh, sometimes I do, but this one I skipped and I waited for basically a pullback. Now, what did I do? I did actually, interesting enough, take a short. And the reason was because uh, 
the basically this was it was still a downtrend, right? Let's face it. This could have been just a correction. Price action made another leg here, so and showed some weakness. Look at this doji here. Uh, look at these smaller candles, and then look at this big bearish candle right here. So we're still in a downtrend. Yes, there are some reasons, perhaps for a reversal, but I see a strong one-hour bearish breakout candle at that red arrow. I see a close near the low. I see a sizable candle, and I see uh, basically a bearish. So those are the two main things, actually, right? Sizable close, no wick, no wick. Okay, so and we see wicks here, actually. All right, so. Just looking at price action, that shows me, okay, it's worth taking a try, although I think this could correct higher, uh, so I'm going to be on guard. I'm going to be very cautious. That's why I told traders live on Tuesday that if I see a bullish pin bar or a bullish candle, I'm going to exit that trade, and there's actually the opposite potential, close and reverse for uh, the long. So what happened? So this candle actually still closed bearish, so I stayed in that trade. Uh, and was hoping for momentum to the, to the downside. And if I would have gotten that, I would have moved the trail uh, along with these candle highs to catch as much, as much as possible. But we got a bullish candle here. So that's the clue uh, I was saying live on Tuesday, not after the fact, but during a live webinar, not even a screen sh screenshot, okay? That if we get a bullish candle, a bullish pin bar, that this is the exit. So what did I do? Exit happened. And we got a good upside, indeed, uh, as a continuation of this reversal. Later on that day, I also warned traders in a separate webinar that we shouldn't go along here because we're at resistance. All right. So that's a different matter, but I was warning traders for that. Later on Wednesday, I took a live trade right in here at the euro dollar long. Now, why was that? We see, first of all, some wicks at the bottom. All right. We don't see very strong candles, perhaps, but we see wicks that indicate that indicates that support is there. We also see a support bottom here, plus adding all those other factors like expecting a bigger correction and the failure for price really uh, to, to to break this bottom. Plus these wicks uh, were enough for me to take along right here, and I exited basically somewhere in here. I'll show you that in a second. We, after that, still got support. Look at these wicks, and we still had one more push-up to the main target I talked about, 112.16. So let's take a look at that. I entered here, as you can see, exited here. And one of the reasons why I exited, look at the momentum, correction momentum. One of the reasons why I exited was a pin bar on the 15-minute chart. All right, this is an intraday trade. Although I had a target that was aimed at 112.16, I also said that if price gets up to 112, 111.75, I would be flexible in exiting uh, and, and getting out of that trade. So there was a pin bar. I expected that that pin bar would be a big wick, a bearish close, a close near the low, and I expected that bearish pin bar would cause a retracement. There basically uh, also one of the reasons why I exited on the 50 minute bar was because I had already seen three moves. One here, two here, three here. So there was a bit of consolidation here, which added basically reasons to exit. If if the pin bar would have been here, I would probably have stayed uh, for one more push. Okay. And you can see on a 50 minute chart here, you can see some exhaustion as well and the lack of breaking this top. All right. So look at all these candle highs and lows. Look at these candle lows. All right. Look at these candle lows, always pushing with higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. And here we didn't have that. So that's price action also showing that there's weakness. All right. I know it's a five minute chart, but we're looking at an intraday trade anyhow. So that makes sense. All right. At some cases at least. So those were the reasons for the exit. So besides now you saw a practical example uh, that we discussed in live webinars Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So let's take a look at other aspects that are important when discussing this. So you, you can see that wick was important. The close near the high and low was important. The candle size was important. But also other things like the close versus the previous close. All right? The close 
versus the previous high and low. And the current high and low versus the previous high and low. So let's take a look at some examples. Look at the green box here. All right. You can see this is the pound dollar for hour chart. Look at the close of this candle versus the close of the previous candle. You see the close is higher than the previous close. You see that the close is higher than the previous high. And you see that the high is higher than the previous high. So you see basically an uptrend in candles, very simply said. Of course, with the dark red box, that is not true. And that's a classical pin bar. So let's take a look at the orange box. All right. We see that basically price is making two dojis. Then we see a couple of candles that are making lower lows and lower highs. All right. But we also see candle sizes that are small. The candles are small here. That's another kind of signal. So not only the candle closes are important, right? The candle closes are nicely showing a downtrend. But we also have to look at the size. The size is small, smaller candles, which means that this is probably still correction. The upside candles are bigger, therefore probably in control, and we see the upside correction. Let's take a look at the red box example. We see basically, uh, here we see a candle close near the low, pretty strong candle, but it didn't break the candle low. All right. Here we see indecision candles, but look at that last candle, right? That last candle broke below the candle lows here of these candles, broke below this candle as well, the low. So that's indicating right here, the break of support, candle low support, and indicating that these bearish candles now are in control. Purple box here too, you can see indecision candles, but once the highs are broken with a candle close, right here that is well above the candle highs. Another kind of confirmation that the momentum has shifted towards the upside. All right, so hopefully that's clear. Um, let's take a look at some live examples though. And now I'm gonna need your active participation, all right? So I got five quiz questions for you based on the things we just discussed. So, look at the candle with the purple arrow. All right. You see, basically, it's a bearish candle, obviously. But the question is, is this a good reversal candle? Is this a reversal candle that is worth trading? So let's formulate it this way. Yes, no to this question. Is it worth trading? Yes or no? Worth trading, yes or no? All right. Uh, I should say uh, the direction indeed, <laughs> because that could cause confusion. Sorry for that. So. That's actually interesting because I guess some of you could even interpret it in different ways, right? Because what is the trend in this case and what is the reversal, which is, I guess, another uh, a good question, isn't it? Um, so, okay, let me, let me say it this way. I was thinking about a bearish reversal to the downside because I considered uh, the trend up, all right? So when I talked about reversal, I was talking, is this a good trade for downside? That was my original thought. I should clarify that, actually. So... Great uh, observation. I'm not who, who, there's a lot of chats. I'm not sure who, it, who that was. So in any case, we got a lot of no's. We got one yes, one yes for up. So that's actually a no according because I'm looking for yes for down. So we got more no's, I think. We got a couple of yes for ups. And we got one yes for bearish. Let's see. So we got uh, two yeses, I think, for down, a couple of yeses for up, and more no's. So... Regarding downside, let's talk about bearish first, okay? Uh, for downside, I don't think it's a good trade. I don't think it's a good candle for downside. So I don't think this is a good shorting opportunity based on the candle with the purple arrow. Not good short. Because I think that 
first of all, if you look at the candle, there's a big wick at the bottom that indicates support, actually. Right? We need the wick on top for a bearish reversal. We see a bearish candle, but the candle is pretty small. The, the, the body itself of the bearish candle. Um, so we see if we compare it that close to the previous closes and lows, it actually didn't even close below these support levels. All right, so it, this is a breakthrough of support, but it's actually kind of a false breakthrough of support because of the wick. And Ergo had a great comment. It looks like a bull flag, and it does. It looks like a sideways box with the momentum prior to it. So for those that said, yes, it's a good reversal for upside, that, I think, could have more value than, than, than downside, indeed. Uh, so yes, that, that upside... Would make sense. I'm not sure if this is the best candle for upside necessarily, but of the two, that makes sense. Uh, is it the best candle ever? Probably not, but it could be good enough to think about it, depending on other circumstances and stuff like that, right? But downside, no. So no. Yes, upside maybe, yes. Downside, no. Uh, looks like a hanging man at the top, yeah. To be honest, these, these, these pattern names are is something that uh, Nenad is, is better at than me. I just, you know how we always have some things that are difficult for you to remember and some things that are easy for, for you to remember. I always have that with candlestick patterns. I, it's always funny. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's the first one. Let's take a look at the second. We got an observation from Constantinus. Constant that the Aussie technicals don't work 100%. That's why I take fundies in the mix. Yeah, if you look at higher time frames, in any case, it's good to take a look at fundies indeed. And um, Aussie, well, I think it's more fundamental, it's more technical than the CAD in my opinion. But yeah, it does. I can see your caution with that regarding the, the, you know, the movement it makes with commodities and stuff. So next example, we're looking at, uh, let's see, two examples here. Is this a reversal trade for downside? Is this a reversal trade for downside? Uh, so uh, basically, how do we formulate the question here? Um, good trades. Which trades do you like for downside? One or two? Let's make this one. Let's make this two. Or And if you like both, you can write one and two, by the way, right? You can write both of them. If you like both, that's just write one and a two. Both are bearish setups. So let's see. We got uh, we got one constantly saying more confirmation needed on both. Uh, we have more ones. One two. Uh, Ergo says small correction downside. One person saying both. All right, great job. So the majority are the ones, and I'm going to agree with you. I think that one is uh, a good pin bar. I think two is a mediocre pin bar and not worth trading as it is. Now, could there be something that might make it worth it? Yes. You know, there could be a confluence of things that could be still make it worth it but if we just look at basically uh, as a standalone one is i think worth it two isn't so i agree with the ones and let's take a look why i agree with that now, by the way first of all before i dive into one that candle that we talked about in the previous slide here right that's this one okay so let's we can see the, the action after that okay we see a bearish candle bullish candle and eventually we do see the upside continuation all right so just just uh, for your information there. All right, so let's talk about those bearish candles. So, yes, we got a good wick. We have a candle close near the low. Uh, we also have a candle close that is lower than the previous candle close. So we got a decent sized candle, not a very small one. Uh, this low even poked below that low. You know, these are all small factors. The most important is the wick, uh, the, the close near the low, uh, and, and the close basically the, below the previous low. Now let's compare that to the previous one. We got a wick, yeah, but we got a bearish, a bullish close. We have a close above the candle high and above the candle close. So I don't think there is, 
a tiny bit of exhaustion, yeah, definitely. But is it a reversal signal? Because no, because I think that these candles can appear, you know, when there is a bit of an extreme kind of push, and then you get a wick. But it's just kind of like kind of a retracement exhaustion, not necessarily reversal exhaustion. You got to be careful for those types of candle wicks, and I think that this is one of those. All right, at least the odds are like that. All right. So, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, basically, this wick, all right, this candle, you can see here. So, we got two dojis after that, and we did get the follow-through higher, all right? That's, that was the outcome after that, uh, after this. And one person said small retracement, and indeed you could say that there was a bit of small retracement, kind of a bear flag on a 50-minute chart or, or hour chart, maybe even 30-minute um, chart. That would be a bull flag, excuse me, and you got continuation. So anyhow, next one. How do I formulate this question? I'm talking about this candle. Oh, yeah. Um, I just didn't think about the question. I wanted to talk about that candle, but I need to formulate a specific question. All right. Is this... A good continuation candle. Yes, no. For downside. Is this a good continuation candle for downside? For bearish momentum. Let's say we're in the trade already. We're already in a short from a higher. Is this a good continuation candle? All right, great. Thank you so much for uh, for all those answers. We got majority yes and a couple of no's. And uh, so my answer, my opinion is yes. Uh, I agree with the yeses. Now let's talk about the no's. I so the, probably the people that said no, you're maybe worried about the support, and I can I can understand that. And uh, trade EMX even says we don't know, and I can understand that fully. And I can see your opinion on that. That's why I have this this um, screenshot here um, to discuss this this kind of these elements. So support levels, resistance levels are very important indeed. But my rule of thumb is that will these support or resistance levels be respected? Then we will see that back into price action. Uh, so if price is closing like this, I think that's it okay follow through. It's a bit of a small candle, but it's okay. The close is near the low. Uh, it's a bearish candle. It's okay size. It's not very small either. I think that's a, an okay size for a continuation, and I would not necessarily be scared of this, you know, setup um, because of the support level. I see that the, the candle itself is communicating that the bears are still in control. If the bears were to lose control, the candle, the next candle or this candle would look different. It would be a pin bar or there would be engulfing twins next to it. So I guess it also depends where I took the trade. If I took the trade, I should have maybe said where. If I took the trade from, from up in here or even up in here, I am not worried. I can move the stop loss above that candle high and I can trail stop it. If there is a bullish reaction to the support, I lock in profit. If not, you know, this... I can continue with this trade, but I'm not going to market exit this trade. I would maybe trail stop it, but not market exit because the candle is in my favor. And not always will price respond to every single support, especially if we get good candle follow through. Uh, there might be no response at all and we get a push through. So if we look at this candle, this candle close is below the candle low. It is below the candle close, the previous candle, right? Those are all good things. we got a Close near the low. We got a good bearish candle, a decent size. It's all good things, all showing continuation. So yes, I think it's a good candle to stay in. I understand those that say watch out for support. I agree with you on that. But my view is when I look at basically momentum versus support or resistance. Uh, let's make that a bit better. Versus support or resistance. I judge the winner between those two. There's always this battle, right? by looking at the candle strength. Um, basically, you can see, you know, you get a good idea of who could be the winner. 
if, if you have a strong candle, that will give you an idea, you know, what, what the winner will be. Let me show you an example, actually, uh, of the euro, I think it was pound USD. Let me, let me pull here my charts one second. All right, here, yeah, let me pull this one over quickly just to give you one more example. I had this trend line here, and I said this trend line will not hold uh, because this candle is too strong. This is a momentum candle. This candle with the close near that low, such a dramatic size. You know, all the things, the low, the close near the low, the close below, the closes, the low here. That support is not going to be able to, to handle and, and stop this flow of momentum. And indeed, it broke. Just to give you an example of that. Head and shoulders. It is a head and shoulders pattern indeed. And the head and shoulders broke with this, the break of the action line, with this candle. Good observation, absolutely. Great stuff. All right, we got one more. Uh, I think one more, no, two more. Okay, oh, wait, I have to hurry up then in that case. This, uh, let's skip this question, then I'll just give you my opinion on this one. Uh, this green candle, all right, now, or let me quickly uh, ask you then. This green candle, is that, I don't know how to formulate it. Now I'll just tell you anyways. This green candle, is it, I wanted to ask you, is this, uh, candle still in control? Is this still a bullish sentiment at this point? So we got two no's, one yes, five two at the moment, five three, seven three, seven four, nine four, no, seven four, seven six, eight six. It's very close actually. Very interesting. I think I, I would agree. I, just, I don't want to spoil it here. I could agree with both of you. I'm going to vote for no. I don't think the bulls are in control anymore. That's my preference. I do, do sympathize with the yeses, but I'm going to vote for no. And the reason is, yes, this is a master candle, but five candles after that, uh, I think Nenet, we can check just in a second, Nenet uses a two to four candle rule. This is candle number five already. Uh, I think that it's taking too long for and the master candle effect uh, is kind of losing its grip. If we look at the, the recent candles, we see bearish candles. We see a, a sequence of candle lows and, and highs that are lower, closes that are lower, right? So everything here is, is bearish momentum there. So that's why I would vote for no. Good candle size too. It's taking too long. And indeed, look at that. Follow through to the downside. All right. So at a break of this channel. Uh, last but not least, this do this this particular candle uh, in the purple box is a doji, as you can see. Um, do who is, in your opinion, um, how do I formulate this question? Let's see. Uh, what what do you think? Maybe I'll just make it an open question. What do you think about this, this, this situation? All right, you've got one bullish, one bearish. <laughs> Everybody says, hmm, that's, a, I think, a good description of this one. Uh, we've got a lot of mixed ones. We got a couple of bears, we got a couple of bulls, and a couple of many actually weights and indecisions and no trade situations and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think that in this case, uh, I would also agree with the, the indecision ones. But if I had to choose, I still think it looks um, it looks like a correction within a downtrend. So therefore, the overall situation is bearish. But in, in, a, in a waiting mode. Uh, now, the reason why is, is that the candles to the upside don't have real control. This is, so this is a small candle. This is a big wick. Uh, this is overall a sideways box and we got momentum prior to it. So the bears on control is just, there is a correction at this moment. So with, from that point of view, uh, this indecision here 
I, what I would wait for is, is probably the break of the candle low uh, to, to get an indication of a continuation, confirmation of a continuation downwards. It would be different if, if this candle would have been a bit stronger, at least, with the close near the, near the high. Uh, but for, from that point of view, I don't think it's, it's, it's a bullish vibe. Now, for those that are curious, we got one more Datsun candle, after which we got two upside candles, uh, and we got a bigger correction. I do think that uh, you know we, we can see good follow through to the downside, but this candle is not so worrying as yet, for my opinion, but is already a bit of a warning signal. signal. This one is, because look at that candle close near the high. Look at this second candle uh, close above the high, close above the close, etc. So this one is, is even more dangerous, and you get the bigger correction, after which you get again a pin bar and more downside. So that was that. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Nenet, and we can actually check with Nenet what he was thinking, what he thinks about, I'm curious what he thinks about this master candle, actually. Um, and whether he thinks it's bullish or bearish. So let's see what Nana thinks about that. I'm going to pass over the charts to Nana now. Nana, how are you doing? Hi, Chris. Yes, I'm here. I just shared a screen. So, yeah, I can take a look at a chart. I prepared uh, some two, actually, two strategies, price action trading strategies. Uh, the first one uh, will be, of course, the part of our uh, price action training school. And now this is before we actually did a class. I prepared this webinar. So you should definitely take uh, into consideration this uh, GBP dollar price action trading because uh, this is the strategy based on AK trading where you can make a good number of pips after GBP dollar news. I think the, the, the strategy is working uh, like it's, I think, 80% accurate. So it's, it's very, very accurate. It's purely based on news trading, on news momentum. And uh, you should take, definitely, you should take it in, into consideration. Uh, so GBP dollar price action news trading solely on GBP dollar, solely on just after very, very strong news. Uh, as we had uh, two strong news for this week, so I will show you. And uh, the second one is uh, inside bar daily and inside bar M15, so price action strategy, so I will delve into actually trading. These are price action uh, systems for itself, so very simple to use, uh, very suitable for new traders, very suitable for experienced traders, so I don't think that there should be any problem with uh, actually trying these strategies and uh, learning the, the the rules because the learning curve is very very short so uh, first I will open a uh, Australian dollar chart so okay let's see Australian dollar uh, what was the time frame for our right oh that was uh, that was way back actually net it I took charts from one and a half years ago so that there's no reference to like recent history. I, I, was, I was thinking to actually take a look at it, Master Candle. Yeah, the Master, but I don't... master Candle, no, that, uh, is, is that candle you wouldn't see. It's from one and a half years ago. I, I went back. Ah, wait, I, so that no one has any. Yeah. I just took it back from history so that uh, there's no, ah, no problem. memory. No problem. Yeah. yeah, we already covered Master Candle trading and we will be covering uh, again on Price Action Training School, so uh, no problem about it. So, first, let me explain this. Uh, interesting and very, very profitable news trading strategy. So you can try to demo trade it uh, at a first occasion. So when the next red news uh, come for uh, GBP dollar, try to trade this, okay? So this is how the strategy goes. Time frame is five minutes exclusively, guys. Uh, th this is very, very, very manual trading strategy. So pretty much you should follow the rules. So there, there, are no stra there is no straying away from the, from the rules. So it should be respected from the top to the bottom. Five minute time frame, London time. Okay, so uh, London time is on our platform, it's actually GMT plus two, okay? So London is 9.30, okay? It opens at 9.30 and actually, that is 10.30 my time, 11.30 our MT4 Admiral Markets platform time, okay? 
So 9:30 GM, uh, 9:30 London time, and then you decide you should definitely see it on, in your own time zone, and that corresponds to 11:30, 11:30 our platform time. GBP tends to reverse the direction after news is released. It will happen, usually, very, very, very often. Wait until the close of 9:30 bar. So wait until 9:35. I'm speaking again, guys, don't be confused, uh, mark my words and follow me, this is London time, okay, 9.30, 9.35, London time. London is GMT plus one at this time, okay, and uh, I am currently GMT plus two, and the platform time is GMT plus three, okay, so... If 9.30 bar closes higher, then it opened. You open a sell order. If it closes lower, put a buy order in. Set the order price to where the market was at 9.30. Okay, so watch it. Stop loss 20 pips, target price 20 pips. Cancel the order at 10 o'clock if nothing happens. Okay, so these are the rules. Okay, and now let's see it on the chart itself. So pay attention, I said this is very, very strict, no straying away. So look at this, guys. So this was actually 11.35, because this is London, London time. London time is 9.35, uh, okay, our platform time is 11.35. So this is when London, this is when actually, sorry, guys, this is when uh, news kick in for a, for a pound, okay? So, for a pound, this is the time. And what happens then? What did I say? Okay, so if 9.30 bar closes higher than it opened, open a sell order. So, you need to have this window here, and you need to be very fast, okay? You need to be very fast. Now, let's watch it. Open is 44.60, close was, was 44.56, so this bar actually, okay, you see what happened, we go with a buy order, okay, so it closed lower than it opened, it closed lower than it opened, okay, what happened then is you immediately place a buy. If it closed at 44.56 here, you open a buy trade. Those are the rules. And 20 pips is yours. Next example. So this is purely news trading. Okay? Don't ask me can you trade this uh, Except for the news, no. This is just strictly for news trading. Another 11.35, okay? 11.35, that is when London, when GBP news kick in. So GBP news is almost always, listen to me, almost always 9.30 London time or 11.30 platform time, okay? So you don't trade NFP, you don't trade anything except pound news, okay? Only pound news allowed. No NFP, okay? No other news, no euro dollar. This is very strict. Here, 11.35. Watch this, guys, 11.35. The rules, again, if the 9.30 bar closes higher than it opened, open a sell order. If it closes lower, put a buy order. So, okay, so this open of this candle was 44.42, right? And it closed at 44.55, see? Here. So, the close was higher than the open. So, we put a sell order here. Guys, sell order there. Look at this, only 12 pips draw down, and it went to 20 pips profit. So last two trades were successful. You can backtest this system price section. This is pure price section. This is naked trading. Okay? 
This is naked trading price action. Test it and I advise you to use it. Okay? Very strict, very clear. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. Now I will move on to second. To IB, EMA and IB daily. First we will go with IB daily, then this will be IB on 15 minutes. So once more, pound dollar strictly, strictly five minute chart, strictly strong pound news. Test it and see if you like it. Okay? Next one is, no, 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 you don't watch the news, you just follow reversals. As I said in the rules, pound tends to reverse after the news. But the rules are clear. Okay, the rules are very clear. Okay, these are the rules, so follow it. Okay, and pay attention, guys, to pound news time zone. Pound when pound gets the news, it will be 9:30 UK time, 11:30, 11:30 platform time. So wait until the close of 9.30. So it's 9.35, okay? 9.35, okay? I always go for 9.35, okay? Always for like this, as I showed you. 9.35 here, see? 9.35, 9.35, okay? Like this. You wait for the close. Here. Now, second one is IB, inside bar, guys, inside bar. So let's talk first a little bit about our inside bar. So when you see a candle, it, 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 it isn't master candle that we, uh, I explained. It's, it's different master candle. This is called master candle. Some people call it a mother candle because there is two candlestick pattern, uh, uh, inside bar or IB. Master candle is candle that contains inside bar within it. Okay, some people call it a mother candle. Here we see master candle IB, master candle IB, master candle IB. So these are representations of inside bar. This is also an inside bar. Okay, you see how inside bar is contained. So inside bar is contained within the body of the previous candle. Okay, also take taking into consideration highs and lows. So high, low, look at this. So these are inside bar and these are inside bar patterns. So this is inside bar up, this is inside bar down. This is inside bar up, bar up, bar down, bar down. So please now take a screenshot because I'm not sure that you're familiar with this. So take a screenshot, snapshot this screen and watch these patterns because this is what you will be doing on five minute, on sorry, on daily or on fifteen minute. Okay. Now for daily chart. For daily chart, guys, you should definitely, definitely consider. Okay. Consider this example. Here, here you can see you need to mark. You need to mark important levels. Okay. You do it on daily chart. So here you can see, you watch the previous history. Here we had a lot of rejections, a lot of rejections, and this candle here, actually this candle here, closed. Okay, so when this candle closed, is closed, you, you put your horizontal line, because this is a strong level. See, in the past it showed a lot of rejection. Here, watch this, watch this, see? It's very strong. Now we have an inside bar. So this candle here is inside bar. This candle here is contained here. Okay? It's contained. Now, if you take a look at this, this should signify a down move, right? But because it's contained exactly at support, you don't take a trade to the downside because you always watch the history in the history there was buying strong buying here see 
strong buying of this level, okay, strong buying, strong buying. Here, this is pin bar, see? But it's at support. This is inside bar at this important support. Look what happened afterwards. Straight to the upside, okay? Let's see next example. This is also inside bar. But if you take a look at this example, this is exactly an up inside bar. So the chart should go up. So what you do is, again, same. Mark this level. Watch this. This is strong level buying. Buying. So you see, there was a lot of buying in the history. Inside bar at support, and that is, is, is an up inside bar. What happened? It went to the long side. Next one, okay, inside bar, you see, inside bar. According to this chart, it should go down. You see, this is that inside bar. It goes down, see, goes down. So, what do we see here, guys? Okay, we see a potential rejection. Mark the level, the zone. We had a lot of, lot of, lot of selling here. See? Selling, selling, selling all the way. So, this is the cue that the price will go down and it goes down. So, on daily chart, if you want to take a if you want to take part-time trades, well, you can do it as this. Have in mind that stop loss for long trades should be below uh, the master candle low, and stop loss for short trades is above master candle high. Or if you don't want to trade inside buyer day on daily, you can actually use it as the cue where the price will go next couple of days. So this is an excellent way to go to the possible next day or next couple of days trend. Okay, so use it on daily chart. On 15 minutes it's different. You need to put two EMAs. It's 16 EMA and 32 EMA. This is for every single Forex pair. It doesn't matter just pound dollar. It can be used on every single pair because this is price action. Okay? So you use it on every single pair, guys. Okay? It doesn't matter which pair. 15-minute time frame or the end. 16, 32 EMA. So when blue is above red, you go for long trades. When red is above blue, you go for short trades, okay? The strategy is very simple. You wait for the pullback, and then you trade according to these patterns here, okay? For up and for down, okay? This is what you're paying attention. This will be your trigger. Inside bar on 15 minutes, okay? So, here on 15 minute time frame, Wait, let me just show you the screen. It will be much better if I show you this. Okay, so, okay, wait a second. Okay, so like this. Mm -hmm. Case. Now this taskbar is not going to. Okay, so okay, it doesn't matter. We will we will use this example. Okay, here. So you wait for the pullback and use the trigger from inside bar. Okay, for up trade, you want to see a long inside bar. Here we have short inside bars, you see? This is all to the short side. Very, very clear, short, okay? See? To the short side, see here? 
and price went actually down okay then next example is actually here see I will zoom in this one so according to this chart you have the pattern here see down down and this is it same one here so this is it here you go short inside bar pullback so for this is simple as I said there is these are so simple strategies you can try to use okay so you as soon as you see an inside bar you enter but for these kind of for this kind of trading you should definitely pay attention to pullback because you want to see a pullback inside EMAs or very close to EMAs you don't want to trade here you want to see a pullback inside okay inside so very simple rules very very effective rules guys here another inside by bar here and you go long here you see here this is inside bar to the long side here see and you go long so you need to scan you need to wait for retracement and you need to trade it how you take profit stop loss is five pips below master can low same for short trades stop loss five pips above this level and you actually open one hour time frame and mark important levels so if you went long at this stage you will actually try to take a profit here because that is on 15 minute time frame trade you should definitely protect your profits once you see that the price is losing momentum okay so here should be your first target somewhere close to these levels okay yes uh, price is below EMA but EMAs are bullish because blue is above red it still is a valid entry so try to use these strategies very very simple as you can see can be very effective and uh, here again I will show you this is your trigger okay and this is for M15 and here you see the rules for pound dollar news trading so if you have any questions now you can ask me if you don't have any questions we can assume that everything is clear so as, as I'm telling you price section can be very 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 easy to trade so the slides again yes of course okay this is pound dollar here okay pound dollar price section uh, this time frame, uh, time, time frame for this is solely five minute Dogan solely five minute this is inside bar for 15 minute and uh, daily I there is no slide for daily I I showed it on live chart so if you want to look it again this webinar is being recorded and it will be uploaded tomorrow so you will be able to watch this again okay if you have any questions as always don't hesitate to ask me okay okay here are the rules 1632 EMA 1632 EMA so long trade when this candle closes and the price breaks uh, this close for one pip you go long same for short trades you see inside bar go short when price breaks below one pip same here inside bar go short when price breaks the low of one pip okay so usually it's immediately but just for your own consideration wait just that one or two pip break out it will be usually enough for you to have a momentum trade okay uh, Dogan is asking what is your new target for euro dollar I know it's not anything about the course 
Well, uh, the target has already been hit, at least profit stop, uh, because we were long on euro dollar from the analysis and from session recap. So you could make like 50, 60 pips to the upside, even more 80 pip. So 12.35 was maximum I had for euro dollar, and it came very close. So I can say that uh, euro dollar trade was over. So it's NFP in two days. So in, I mean it's tomorrow. So you need to be very, very careful. Okay. I probably will do updated euro dollar analysis prior to NFP or do dollar yen. We will see. So that's it, guys. Uh, this uh, is price action strategies uh, webinar, and uh, if anything is not clear, feel free to email us. We will answer, of course. Cheers, guys. Uh, they, uh, one more question. Which pairs work best for the IB? Major pairs, but you can also go with minor pairs, because this is a price action. It's not indicator correlated except for M15. So for M15, Pay attention to most major pairs plus yen pairs, and for daily, it's basically everything. Okay? So that's it, guys. Okay? Talk to you on Monday. Until then, cheers. Trade safe.